Okay, Mark, I see your question here about getting those three columns equal, and it's a great question, and I never really looked at it before, and I will tell you right now that I did not know the answer to this when you asked it, and it's taken me about an hour to figure it out because of a huge mistake I made when I originally got going. So here's just my mock-up of it. So we got our three unequal height columns, and the first time I came through here, I made each one of these... Uh, I went into the columns, so let's go into the columns here, and I got it way down here at the bottom, so let's just go into, let's go into the third column, and I came in here and I made the background white, and don't want to do that, so you don't want any color in the background at all, uh, and I saw on yours it appeared to be transparent anyway, so you don't want any column background color, and you don't want any border around it either, okay, because if we come in here into this, uh, I guess it would be this column. Let's just take a look at this here. If we were to try to affect just a given column, we're going to come up with a CSS ID selector of cow left 100 space cow inner. And we don't want to be affecting the cow inner at all. We want to just be affecting the cow left 100. And I'll show you that here now. So if we come in and I'm going to right click here because I want to find the row that this is sitting inside of. And so here now we have our cow left 100, and here's the row that it's inside of. And as you see here, if I come down, you can see the height. So this height's only going to come right down to here, and the next one's going to go full, and then the next one is going to go a little bit less. And so that's where your problem's coming in, um, is you're having the different heights. So how can we equalize the height of these three columns? And as one simple line of CSS. So we'll just come up here and I'm just going to, I can just click on the plus button or I could just leave it as is. And uh, either way, we're going to just put in a new element. And all we're going to do is we're going to say display of flex. And now as I hover over them, you're going to see that all three of them are exactly the same height because it automatically applies, uh, it's a line something. Uh, but it's stretch. What it does is whenever you put flex onto any elements, it stretches them all out so that they are the height of its bounding box. So here we have the bounding box, which is the row. It's going to make all three columns the same height as the inside of this row. Now what we do is, like I said, in this case here, let's open up the middle one. We come to our call inner and we have our background color here set to white. And we could turn that off if we wanted to. And then down here somewhere, we got border color and et cetera. So it's got all the border stuff down here. But that's not where our problem is. So what we want to do, or that actually is where our problem is, and that's what screwed me up for an hour, is what you want to do is we want to affect it here just at the column level, not at the column inner level. So we don't want to affect it here, which is what the native element inside of ClickFunnels will do. We want to affect it at the outer element right there. So what I'm going to do is we'll go up to the one here where I took out all the background and the border. And we're just going to say here, again, I'll just click on a plus button just to give us our new one. And we will then go, uh, let me see here, back, oops, let's spell it right, back ground, and I'll just scroll down. Uh, here we go, background color. And we can put a type in white or we can put in its hexadecimal equivalent of six F's and it gave us now a nice white background. On the top here, all I did is I said for this top element, just give me 20, 20 pixels of margin at the top of this very first element right there. You can put padding on here. You could in that case go into the column and put padding in there, which would push it down. I just gave it 30 pixels of margin at the top. And then in order to do a border around it, we would just come down here and we would just say border and let's just say three pixels. We want it to be solid and we want it to be, let's just say in our case here, we want it to be black. And I see you already had those set up on yours. So you just have to come into your thing here. Whereas I figure out what this color is that you have there. Yeah. And again, so yours appears to be uh, transparent in the background. So you don't have to put in any background at all. Uh, so that saves you one step. 
And then I see you here, you have a corner radius. And so uh, we got we got our background color, we got our border, and then we would also come in here and we would say border dash radius. Oops, wait, isn't that? Um, that's not right. Hang on, let me pause this for a second. Okay, I was right. I think I just must have typed it in wrong or something. So we have border radius 10 pixels is what I put in there. And you see, then we get the 10 pixels on the corner or whatever pixel radius you want on there. And that's it. And so in order to put this into ClickFunnels, then you come in here, um, settings, come down to your custom CSS, and you would put put that in here. And in this particular case, you would figure out whatever your row, you would grab your ID. And so in this case here, my ID is this. You don't have to have the div in front of it. So just put in the row, display flex with the curly brackets on either side. And then for the each of these columns, you see here you got cow left 100, cow center. Your cow left numbers are going to be different. So the 100, the 185, and the whatever down here are going to be, oh, that was open. So those are going to be different. But how you can really affect it is you can just go after the inner content. So instead of what I have here, let me just put in a period because it's a class, inner content. Is that right? Did I spell that right? Inner content. How come it doesn't seem to be kicking in? Uh, oh, okay. It did. It's just, oh, and what you're also going to see here then is, so this is wider at this point. So what we would probably do, let me see here. Um, probably let's do this. Let's do width of 30%. Um, and then... Come up here, row. I had to stop to look that one up real quick. I was using it the other day, but I forgot what it was. Um, so up here then in our row, we would go again. You don't need the div here. You just need the hashtag and the CSS ID selector. Um, and then we would go display flex, and then we go justify content space between, and that'll give us equal amount of space between each of our columns. And again, down here in the inner content, I set that to a width of 30% because you have three of them. You can set it to be a little bit more, a little bit less, depending on how closely you wanted to put them up next to each other. In fact, we can come in here and I'll just show you. So I got 31% and the rest of the screen is going to move because I'm affecting all of them at this point. So what you really need to do is to come in here, grab that ID. We're going to copy that. And then we're going to come back down to our inner content and just in here. Now, again, you got to put all this into your CSS, uh, your custom CSS. Um, we put that in there, put in a space. Now we should, oops, forgot the hashtag. Now we are only affecting these columns down here because these are the ones inside of this row. We're not affecting the columns above it anymore. And so that's how you can set this up. And hope this wasn't too terribly confusing. And let me know if you got any questions.